night guys it is a gray gloomy day we are somewhere in the middle of the state of virginia on this uh, well it's kind of a pleasant spring day i think we have stumbled in to thursday april 29th 2021 or somewhere thereabouts and uh I have been so busy traveling, I haven't had time to check in with the state of the planet here in the past few days. So I am, oh man, I'm sorry, I can't remember which alert viewer uh, sent me this article. This is kind of like, uh, when is Earth Overshoot Day? I guess it gets a little earlier each year. Now I don't think we're quite at Earth Overshoot Day here on April 29th, uh, 2021. But this is just kind of a, a, a segue, I guess, into uh, you can figure out from this article when we are gonna get there. This is just looking at the general theme of overshoot. This is coming again, I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent this to me. This is from, uh, a website called Science Alert. This is a science alert that we have uh, this week. <clears throat> Earth, Earth meaning humans, Earth is using 173% of the world's total bio capacity, scientists warn. I love how they have that headline, Earth is using Yes, I think they need to hire a new headline writer at Science Alert. Humans are using 173% of the world's total bio capacity, scientists warn. All right, humans around the world are consuming far more natural resources than our planet can continue to sustain. Hmm. condemning the majority of people, not to mention every one of our fellow earthlings, to ecological poverty, according to new research. Ecological poverty, that's a new, uh, a new term for the glossary of the collapse. When researchers tried to put a number on our natural resource deficit for the year 2017, so this is already four years old, <coughs> they found our global population of over 7.5 billion people, now pretty much closing in on 8 billion people, had spent 173% of the world's total bio capacity that year. So they're looking at the most recent year, which was four years ago. We were at 173, and you better believe that number has gone way up. <clears throat> that is obviously a major overshoot, and it's part of a trend that has gotten much worse in recent decades. In 1980, Humanity was usually was using only only 119 percent of the world's bio capacity. Yes, <clears throat> much of the surge in demand since then has been driven by wealthier nations, huh? Requiring requiring higher and higher standards of living even if they have to buy their resources from elsewhere. Imagine this, I, I have never thought of all of this. Today, nearly three quarters of all people on this planet live in nations with lower than average incomes and a scarcity of natural resources, which means they simply cannot compete. Clearly, the path we are on today cannot be trod forever. If the world is truly serious about eradicating poverty, 
then experts say we cannot keep ignoring <coughs> the limiting factor that is Earth's resources. <coughs> Dividing the world's countries into four categories <coughs> based on their gross domestic product per capita and their local ecological deficit, the researchers illustrated an unsustainable shift <coughs> in humanity's demand for resources. Wow. If we do not seek to rapidly improve resource security through conservation and restoration, fossil fuel cuts, sustainable development. There you go. We are going to fight overshoot with sustainable development. Uh-huh and shifting consumption patterns, the authors argue our natural capital will be unable to recover and our hope, our hope for a more equal future will be wholly undermined. Hmm. In the year 1980, 57% of the global population lived in a country with the double curse of a below average income and a deficit in biological resources. The researchers found <clears throat> by 2017 that number had jumped to 72 percent of people you know, suffering uh, both below average income and a deficit in biological resources. <clears throat> On the other hand, the other hand, this hand, higher income countries with resource deficits make up only 14 percent of the world population. <clears throat> but this minority <clears throat> demands an astonishing 52% of the planet's biocapacity. Yeah, so 14% of those uh, rich folks, that would include me and you, uh, anyone uh, listening to this, 14% uh, you, of people eating 52% of our planet's uh, biocapacity uh, meaning we're buying it or rating it from uh, these other countries. <clears throat> Switzerland and Singapore are two notable nations that fall into this latter category, which means they are shielded from resource insecurity because they have the money to buy what they need from other places. To live in a truly sustainable way, scientists think we should be using no more than half <coughs> to live in a truly sustainable way. Scientists think we should be using no more than half of our planet's resource capacity, but if everyone in the world lived like those in higher income, low resource countries like Switzerland, we would need roughly 3.67 planet Earths to meet global demand. Do you think so? Quoting uh, the report, <clears throat> from Nature Sustainability. I guess there's actually a publication called Nature Sustainability quoting the report. If the development pattern of these cities or territories are not replicable, there is only one way for such entities to avoid their own demise they must be certain 
that they can financially outcompete everybody else on this planet forever to secure their resource metabolism. I love that term, resource metabolism. This is a, uh, a, a new euphemism for planet eating. Resource metabolism, planet eating. Yes. They must be certain that they can financially outcompete everybody else on this planet forever to secure their planet eating. <clears throat> Continuing the quote, requiring such a strategy to succeed is precautious. Yeah, no, precarious. Requiring such a strategy to succeed is precarious for regions at any income level. This is another way of saying, guys, if you haven't figured this out, this is resource wars building in the 21st century. But it is especially dangerous for lower income regions who cannot compete for resources at the same level without assistance from wealthier nations. There is really not a lot these nations can do. In fact, researchers argue lower income countries, can we say, let's be honest here, can we say sub-Saharan Africa, can we be honest? <clears throat> In fact, researchers argue lower income countries currently face a catch-22 continuing with the status quo will no doubt make their current resource crisis worse, but making rapid changes to, re to human resource consumption will also cost a lot of money, which many simply cannot afford. What's more, because wealthier nations consume many more resources than are absolutely necessary to live, they have much more wiggle room, yes, in the face of future disaster. Yes, in an economic downturn, for instance, a loss of resources is not as catastrophic for Spain as it would be for Niger or Kenya, where such a rapid loss could erode food and energy security for many more people, putting their very lives at risk. Back to quoting the report, <clears throat> this paper strengthens the case that biological resource security is a far more influential factor contributing to lasting development success than most economic development theories and practices would suggest, and shows how unevenly it affects distinct human populations, close quote. Yes, clearly, we are spending more than humanity or our planet can afford. Yes, clearly we are spending more than humanity or our planet can afford. But right now, uh, I have to wrap up this rant because the little dog says there is a mousy. Where's that mousy? Go get that mousy. Do you see a mousy back there or not? Yes. Clearly, uh, <laughs> clearly. Anyway, guys, get out there and enjoy your, uh, your garage while you still can. This is what my garage in, uh, South Austin, Texas looked like for years. You know, uh, I had a two-car garage but I could not fit either one of my
cars into my two car garage because uh, this is what it looked like. There was no room for my car or my gas sucking truck. <clears throat> Good lord. Bye guys.